مساء الخير من مركز الشيخ إبراهيم الضوء لا حفديت ضوءك في السواحل يا منامة فوق الخليج أراك زاهية الملامح بكابتسامة المرفأ الغافي وهمسته يهنئ بالسلامة ونداء مئذنة مضوءة ترفرف كالحمامة يا موطني ذا زورق أوفى عليك فخذ ذمامة ما أجمل أن نبدأ بشعر الشاعر المغفور له غازي القصيبي الذي تغزل على طريقته وتحدث عن المنامة وعن مئذنتها Good evening everybody It's a great pleasure today to continue celebrating the big event the reopening of Manama Fad Al Fadil Minara. Last Thursday, we discovered the new or the original minaret. El Centro di Conservazione Archeologica di Roma has done a wonderful job since 2018. And the archaeologist Roberto Nardi, the director of the center, uh, will speak today about the a project with the researchers and the work from that time. Looking forward to discovering the beautiful story. The floor is yours, Robert. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Uli, for your presentation. Uh, as I said uh, two days ago, it's a, it's a real pleasure for me to be in Bahrain. Uh, we understood immediately in 2018 that this is a wonderful place where people is so friendly, helpful, and positive. This is not common everywhere. And uh, mainly, this is one of the main reasons for us to work so long in uh, this project and uh, in this country. And I want to add something that the very first moment I saw this place, I said this is the most welcoming hall I have ever seen for a lecture. So my dream was since 2018 to come here and present the result of this project, thinking that, dreaming that one day the result would come. So today is a wonderful day, and, uh, and we are here uh, to celebrate the end of this uh, project that was uh, very physical because uh, we worked a lot on the scaffolding. We worked a lot in Italy to prepare the mosaic, but was also a fantastic research. Uh, we studied for uh, two years the incredible story of this uh, minaret and um, I am very glad that we succeeded to write this story in the book that you can have and uh, uh, in order to have uh, a memory staying in uh, paper that is uh, what is uh, the best way to have memory lasting. Uh, there is a long list of things that are needed for this project uh, I have to start with uh, Her Excellency Sheikha May because everything started with her. Without her, without her uh, incredible energy, all this would never happen. And uh, I have to give special thanks to Sheikha Mariam, who was uh, the very first day present. I remember the day at the National Museum when we presented the project. She was sit, sit, sitting right in the first chair and she supported the project from the beginning to the end, even when we discovered that the Minara was not made only of the tower, but was also made by a wonderful basement that we totally ignored at the beginning because it was simply painted with yellow paint, but then in the photographs and the, in the drawings, we discovered that the basement was very richly decorated. And uh, Sheikha, Her Excellency Sheikha Mariam immediately decided to help to restore that basement. And the bank 
of Bahrain and Kuwait who made uh, uh, the sustain uh, standing stable until, uh, until the end. Then again, Mario, I have to, to thank you again uh, because uh, you have been the greatest facilitator for this project. Uh, I understand that the magic word in Bahrain uh, is Mario. <laughs> so if you have a problem or if you need something, you say this is for Mario, or you can say I am a friend of Mario <laughs> and things works. This to tell you also the similarities between uh, Italy and, and Bahrain. It would happen the same. If you have a personality like Mario, so sincere and so devout, everybody would do everything to help you in the good sense. And then, of course, I have to thank uh, 35 people that with different roles have been involved for four years in this project. It's a huge number, 35 professionals. It's really a huge number. And uh, I can tell you that all of them are so sorry that this project is uh, uh, completed and uh, they hope that uh, my coming back presenting the project will be source for uh, other projects in Bahrain. I know that they are there watching <laughs> and, uh, and uh, waiting that I will give them uh, uh, good news about opportunities to come back in Bahrain and, uh, and run other projects. And then finally, but not less important, all the staff of uh, Bacca, they were, everybody was incredibly helpful from the archive, from the technical service, everybody. And uh, Noor, Noor Kader, who is here, she provided technical assistance for the, for the job, for the work, excellent. And uh, I think that we all enjoyed every single minute that we spent on the scaffolding. And this is it. I mean, we would not pretend nothing more than be satisfied of having enjoyed the fourth year of uh, this uh, challenging job. Uh, I would like to share, be, be, before going into technical information and to the description of the work, I would uh, like to review with you uh, some uh, historical aspects of this uh, minaret, because this was, uh, I think, uh, uh, the most interesting aspect of our research, because uh, it's easy. People like Her Excellency Sheikh Hamey, who is used to have a dream, and to have the dream built up, uh, there is something in the middle. <laughs> not all the dreams are uh, easily accessible. And uh, when uh, we received uh, this project, because we strongly wanted to take this project, uh, we had a very vague idea of, uh, of what was the reconstructing, restoring the historical uh, identity of the minaret. What, what means this? Uh, you, how do you design your uh, executive project based on a memory? So the first thing that we decided to do, and we did, we launched uh, through the media service of BACA an appeal on newspapers and televisions in Bahrain asking for uh, stories memories of uh, people who grow up in Al Fadel to tell us what they remember of, uh, of the minaret. And uh, it came out a long uh, receiving of uh, witnesses of story, which, uh, which were very interesting, but very frustrating, because everybody remembered the beautiful minarets, Everybody remember the beautiful interactions of beautiful colors, the beautiful designs, but then what we had in our hands were black and white photographs. 
and uh, is interesting, but of course is not enough. And uh, we spent one year, especially with Andreina, my wife, who is the person who leaded this process, uh, starting to say, uh, did we put in troubles? <laughs> uh, will, uh, we, will we arrive to a reliable solution? Because we were turning around, turning around, and turning around. So uh, just uh, to uh, start, oh, what happened? Just to start, in fact. Yes. This is uh, an incredible document showing us uh, how they built the minaret. Look at the security <laughs> measures of the scaffoldings and the way how carefully they work. This is unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. Stone after stone, the menara was built in this way. And I can tell you that when you are on top, it's really, really high and scaring. So they were used to work in this way. And uh, this is the first time that we have a document of this uh, interest showing us uh, the building of uh, a minaret, including uh, the end, the finishing. Uh, one of the interesting uh, documents and who was reported to us was uh, when uh, Dr. Hamin uh, called us and he told us the story of his father. His father was uh, a, a Benna, a master builder, who in 1919 went to South Iran. No, sorry. He was from South Iran. In 1919, the ruler of Bahrain went to South Iran for an hunting season, uh, probably with, with, with the king and, and the Shah of, of, of Iran. And uh, during these uh, weeks and months, he enjoyed very much some hunting huts. And he asked uh, who built those huts, uh, these uh, palaces and these houses. And it turned out that the builder was uh, Muhammad Amin. And so he was asked in that occasion to come to Bahrain to work in Bahrain. Uh, he came only in 1926 together with uh, his brother, who is uh, the man there. And uh, together they built another minaret in uh, 1926. Then uh, in uh, 1936, uh, when uh, many, there was a, 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 a great moment of development in Bahrain. Today I learned that also the airport was uh, inaugurated in those days, so probably was a very vivid and important period for Bahrain. And uh, they were asked by the Al-Fadl family to build the minaret of uh, the mosque. The Al-Fadl mosque was built uh, in 1768, around that, as a very modest uh, uh, five days prayer mosque made uh, of palm leaves uh, and poles, so it was very, very modest, uh, but then uh, in 1939 was completely renovated and uh, the uh, minaret was built. And uh, the two Amin brothers were not feeling comfortable to build uh, such a difficult building, so they called for a cousin who was uh, another master builder from uh, the Emirates. So three of them uh, leaded 
the building of uh, the minarets. And uh, surprisingly, they decided uh, to decorate <coughs> the external face of the minara with uh, Maiolica tiles coming from Italy, near Naples. This is really surprising because they were from uh, South uh, Iran, so everybody could expect uh, Maiolica coming from there, but they decided from Italy. Probably this was a long design written many years ago <laughs> that the material came from Italy and that, uh, that we were coming and asked to restore it. So uh, the interesting aspect of this is uh, you can see the Minara here just uh, like just close to the sea. So this was uh, before that area was developed. And in fact, uh, uh, the Al-Fadel minaret, as you can see here, was built just uh, by the coast. This is uh, an important uh, representation of the minaret here. We can have a clear idea of the decoration another very good uh, high resolution photographs this come from babco archives where uh, uh, from where we took the details uh, of the basement and uh, the details of uh, the decoration uh, this is uh, sorry i have some uh, yes and uh, this is uh, these photographs come from uh, life magazine uh, and was crucial for us to tell us uh, how the decoration of the balcony was uh, made. And uh, it is uh, simply thanks to this photograph that we have been able to reproduce uh, the actual balcony. But until this moment, as you can see, we are still in black and white. Until uh, this photograph arrived. After one year, one day, we discovered a number of a National Geographic magazine with uh, this uh, photograph, which was uh, again uh, low resolution, but you can imagine how our life changed completely from this moment ahead, because at least we could uh, connect the different tonalities of grey to the colours that are at the base of the new uh, interpretation that, that we made. Uh, continuing the research, um, at a certain point the surprises started to come. Because at a certain point we discovered this video. So what's, what's wrong with it? <laughs> No, no decoration. The basement, yes, but uh, we were really surprised. We didn't know what to think. Sorry. No, back, back, back. OK. Yes. This is a very clear photograph showing us that at a certain moment, the decoration uh, the original decoration was uh, gone and, and removed. So at a certain point, uh, uh, this happened. And uh, again, uh, another picture where we see light decorating the tower, probably for a Ramadan or for some, some festivity. Again, and here, now there is light, so you cannot notice very well, but surprisingly, we found uh, a globe of light uh, switch on, on top of uh, the Minara. And this explains the poem of uh, Guzaibi when he says that <coughs> the minaret was the reference for sailors coming back at the night. So in fact, uh, the, minar the minaret 
was used as a lighthouse. Um, was also used as one of the three reference points for uh, mapping Bahrain. So the Minara is uh, one of the three main uh, points for all the mapping. This tells you that that was uh, the highest building self-standing in all Bahrain that could be used for the, for the trigonometry, for, uh, for the triangulations, for uh, the maps. So um, this was very interesting for us and helped a lot to fix some dates. So the minaret was built, the end of the building of the minaret was in 1938. Uh, at the end uh, of uh, the 50s, the decoration, the originally decoration, the original decoration was removed. And then, there is another video showing another, uh, another dress of the minaret that uh, is uh, completely different than uh, the previous one, totally different from uh, the previous one, and uh, very surprising, this uh, lasted for again uh, about 20 years. So the different phases uh, uh, where uh, this is uh, the minaret that we all remember, how it was made uh, with uh, swimming pool glass uh, tiles. <laughs> I don't know uh, happened, but this is uh, what, uh, what we remember. So in uh, about... Uh, um, 100 years, less than 100 years, we have uh, the 1938 decoration. Then uh, we are at the late 50s, we are uh, around 1958. Then uh, we are uh, in 1962. And then uh, In 1990. Thank you. But maybe. Can I talk? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Good. So we're starting to ask to wonder why the minaret change uh, skin uh, so often. And uh, we received uh, an answer. Sorry, this is going to be very stressing for you, but it's. We realized that uh, the new skin that we found in 1999 had uh, to be removed. So we started uh, to do the planning uh, of the minaret.
it came clear that we had to do a new mosaic, uh, reproducing the original one, uh, it came also clear that that was going to be a long process of uh, a couple of years. So uh, we had meetings with a uh, with team and uh, we decided that we had to follow the process as the original mosaics are made, which means uh, in studio. And then uh, when they are ready to transfer them and apply them uh, on walls. And of course, 50% of my staff said, forget about that, you are completely crazy, because uh, we will never be able to build a mosaic in studio of uh, a tower uh, 30 meters high uh, without uh, making mistakes. And I said, let's try. With the technology today, we can take uh, the risk. But in any case, we had no alternative. So what we did, we reproduced a one-to-one -one model in 3D in scale so that we could um, any moment take the measure of the minaret just like if we were here in Bahrain. So in studio, we had the possibility to simulate the size of uh, the, the section of uh, the minaret and uh, the height. So this is the way we worked. You can imagine the curiosity until six months ago when uh, we shipped the mosaics in Bahrain and when we started to apply the mosaic on, uh, on the tower. This photograph uh, from the National Geographic told us uh, about the decoration, but uh, gave us also an extremely important information. If you see this area here and you enlarge it, you see that only 10 years after the building, the tiles were falling down. And if you imagine that one single tile is about uh, half kilo, so having tiles falling on the ground uh, at that height became very dangerous. And this explains why in uh, uh, 58 uh, uh, they decided to remove uh, all uh, the decoration. And the reason is uh, the sun, the expansion of uh, the materials because the strong sun and probably the glue that were not strong enough. So there is nothing, nothing strange for what happened. Was not a mistake uh, in building, was the extreme conditions of the sun of, uh, of Bahrain. Then uh, it came uh, our turn. How to reproduce uh, uh, this uh, mosaic, uh, trying to stay with the same uh, idea of uh, the memory of it. So because uh, the, um, the resolution was not, was not high from the photograph, we had to develop a process that slowly, slowly gave uh, us the possibility to identify the different uh, decorative motif and uh, reproduce uh, them. This is the process. Starting from uh, uh, a photograph, uh, from the main art the photograph, we developed, we, first we understood the motif, which was made of four different tiles, which is this, with this kind of decoration, and then we design it uh, with, with color. And then we transformed into mosaic, and then into the final pattern. So you see, starting, starting from this motif, we identify this decoration. This decoration was assembled in four pieces, and this was transformed into mosaic, then then was uh, 
transformed into the final pattern. So slowly, slowly, this was the process that we followed to reproduce uh, the original uh, uh, Alfadel uh, minaret decoration. You see, it's, it's not impossible. If you, if you train your eye, after a while you understand that this is made uh, this way. And, that, and then you can do this in, uh, in mosaic. Mosaic, that is uh, the only material that can last forever in the conditions of Bahrain. Because mosaic is not something painted on another material. All the body of the material is made of the same color. And the material is uh, marble, the white, and glass, the color, and gold. So it is uh, uh, an endless uh, material that we used. I didn't expect that it was so difficult to push a finger. <laughs> This is another example. And uh, this, is an, this is a photograph from the minaret now, how the different pattern uh, interact uh, each other. So this is a, uh, is a model that we prepared in uh, 2019 to discuss with uh, Her, Her Excellency Sheikh uh, the final, uh, the final shape, and it was a, an extremely interesting process because uh, she is uh, even more accurate than us, and she didn't gave anything as accepted without a long and careful discussion. It was really, really a great satisfaction. I remember her sitting in uh, her office with the model standing there and walking around <laughs> and pointing here and here and here. So at the end, uh, this is uh, what uh, we were dreaming to do. So the proposal was accepted and we started uh, the process of uh, producing the mosaic. And the first thing that you have to do is uh, to create the materials because this is not an industrial material that you go in a shop and you buy. This doesn't exist. So we had to identify the places to produce uh, the material. Luckily, uh, it is some years that we do this job, so we had uh, places where to ask, and we identified Venice for the glass and the gold. There is one firm doing the same job since centuries and uh, for months and months and months they work only for us. Just to tell you they produce for us 143 kilograms of gold and uh, it takes months to be produced. They produce 2 million and 200 small cubes of 10 millimeters by 15 millimeters by 5 millimeters by hand. So it takes long. So the first step was uh, to have uh, the material available and uh, to design uh, all the process. This is the map of uh, the, the tower of the minaret. And this is, uh, this is the map that uh, the restorers followed to put in place the single, the single pieces. Consider that one of these is uh, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and this is uh, 12 meters long, slice by slice. This is uh, the production of the tests. And then uh, the production of the material started in Venice first.
the 3,300 different colors to choice. First, they produce the pizza in glass. And then the color is tested and corrected. Maybe it's possible to switch off the first line of lights. And then the tessere, the cubes are named tessere, are cut one by one. wonder where the tessere are now on the Milano. <laughs> this is the gold. It's, uh, it's oro zecchino foil uh, embedded in glass. about two years
yesterday when we were doing the packing for shipping and it was uh, two years ago I think Mario right and then uh, uh, everything arrived uh, in uh, Bahrain where we started finally after Covid the application on the minaret to remove the previous mosaic, to replaster the surfaces. Okay, so uh, during the work we restored the balconies, the structure and, uh, and the wood and uh, there was a system anti-birds to prevent uh, the birds coming at, uh, you can see here, at, at every level it seems that it works pretty well there was a new lighting uh, system that also uh, requested many investigations and many studies and uh, uh, you can have the results in front of your eyes you see you saw it two days ago i think that is pretty gentle doesn't disturb is not is not spectacular like uh, is not Hollywood style. This is the first thing I ask. I want something normal. This is a minaret and is a part of a mosque. It's not a show. So give us uh, no shades, uh, simple and honest light. 
And I think that this is what they gave us. Then, <coughs> you know that to prepare one meter of uh, mosaic, one meter is this and this, <coughs> we need 6,600 tessere, one after the other. And uh, uh, the total was uh, 2 million and 244,000. I could give you the numbers of each color, but if you are interested, it is in the book. And uh, this uh, number represents a line long, uh, uh, I cannot read, <laughs> just if you travel from uh, Janabia to Alco. So, yes, so if you, if you unroll the minaret of Alfadel and you put all together in a line, you have a line this long. We started from down to place, uh, this, was, this was a question that many people uh, gave us, will you start from top or will you start from down? You normally start from down because the mosaic down sustain the mosaic up. Otherwise, it will uh, uh, slice down. Even if this means that when you remove the glue from the upper part, you send the glue on the lower part. So you never stop cleaning. Every day, every day, you have to clean again all what you have done. It's long, but this is the only way of doing. And, uh, uh, Starting from the very, from the, the tower of the minaret, which is uh, 15 meters high in one uh, piece, uh, this is uh, when we were arriving close to the end, uh, and uh, this uh, was uh, the last uh, piece, uh, and uh, we arrived uh, with uh, 15 millimeters below the balcony. So uh, this confirmed that the 3D scanning and all the measures were taken with an accuracy of 0.1%. And this is the top. Now you have uh, the beginning of everything and uh, what you see, uh, what you have today. So we believe uh, that uh, the long process of bringing back the minaret to the original, uh, um, to the original decoration, uh, it's, uh, it's here. I would like to close this presentation with this photograph that I love very much. This is in 2019. This was when we discussed but this case, I can tell you that seriously, we spent hours with Shekhamei to see and discuss all the details. And what you can see here on the right is the model that uh, finally, I believe, uh, we reproduce uh, at one-to-one uh, -one scale. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you again, Roberto, for this beautiful story. We need to, we want to visit tonight, the minute, <laughs> I think, after the lecture and tomorrow and every day. Thank you for all the 35 people with you. They're watching now direct via yes, um, yes, YouTube. Yes. Mille grazie. <laughs> da <laughs> al, al, uh, Trent, 35 persone yes, che, che hanno lavorato in Grecia e in Roma al momento. So. Mille grazie per il centro di con sì, conservazione. Sì. Thank, Thank you again. Then we can give the floor to your questions. I leave you Roberto. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nerdi, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. It was really, really interesting. Plus, it's honor, you know, to have such piece of art actually in Bahrain. Okay, just question because I was reading about it. On which basis, actually, you decided to put those actually mosaic pieces in such good synergy to have such lovely an art piece? Actually, thank you. Uh, thank you for your very good question. 
In fact, uh, we have been uh, uh, way less creative than what we expected, because uh, studying the wonderful photograph of uh, Maynard, we could understand which was the original idea of the people who designed the original. So, in fact, uh, everything is recorded on the photograph. And uh, instead of creating, I think that we copied uh, the original, which is at the end what was asked to us. Uh, the, the, the very first request was uh, to restore the original identity of the minaret, just like uh, the people from Al Fadel neighbor remember. So this is what we did. And uh, working uh, with, uh, with the zoom scale and enlarging and enlarging in the fact, we then ended with what we have. We did not add it anything of us. Thank you. Yes. Molti uh, grazie. Brava, brava, brava. Grazie, grazie. I studied in Torino and I see in this project three things. One, as a Bahraini, I see my identity. This is identity birth. It's identity discovery. It's identity strengthening. The second thing that I see in it, this is a story for education to continue. Minimum, we have five colleges of architect in Bahrain that they should study this as a case, as a course. And they should continue learning from it, and they should continue doing similar to it. The third thing that I see, it's a very, very great exchange between Italy and Bahrain. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, well, beautiful. I don't know what to say. You couldn't, you couldn't say better <laughs> what is uh, our dream as a result of this work, because we really did everything from the heart. And uh, any, mom, any day, we, we thought of Bahrain. And we try to do things as, in fact, if we were here. The reason we published this book and uh, we made the video available is to leave the memory of what has been done. And um, any teachers, uh, as you, who want to share this information with the students, for us will be a pleasure. This is our duty. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, thank you. I would like to give you my special thanks, because as you said, you make the dream is the truth, especially uh, I am uh, born in Manama, so uh, this uh, Grand Mosque and the Minaret is something is very important. And I would like just to give you a brief uh, about things. But before, uh, we must thank uh, uh, Her Excellency Sheikh May and also Sheikh Hala because they are looking after this project, which is, is really appreciated by the people, not only from Manama, from the whole kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, this one is uh, something is uh, our heritage and we are proud uh, about it. And also we would like to give a special thanks uh, to Her Highness Sheikh Maryam bin Salman Al Khalifa and uh, Bahrain Kuwait Bank. And I don't uh, uh, surprise about Sheikh May. Uh, because she like uh, all these things and especially Sheikh Maryam because Sheikh Maryam she is poet and uh, she love Manama although she is from Rafa and uh, she gave a lot of things about uh, Manama and I hope it is mentioned in the book if it is not we should uh, take care about it uh, let me just give you a little brief about uh, the mosque we as a Muslim, we say the mosque and a grand mosque. It is the same thing as church and cathedral. Uh, this mosque is uh, as a grand mosque because we use it for five pray and also we use it for, uh, uh, we call it Jum'ah pray, which is the same thing like Sunday. 
and then we use it for our Eid like Easter and uh, Christmas. That's why we call it a Grand Mosque. And this mosque consider the biggest mosque in the area which is coming after holy places in Mecca and Medina. So that one was a landmark for Bahrain uh, from long, and thank you very much you give the back history. And there is something very important. I, I wish that you put it in the book because I could not see it. Uh, this mosque is built many times, especially in the beginning of the 20th centuries. This grand mosque built as, uh, as domes. And the domes is important for the grand mosque because it gives you the echo uh, like, like the speaker because that time there was not speaker. I was lucky. I remember when they put the microphone in the minarets. Uh, uh, then it was pulled down and then built again. And thank God that you have these photos, uh, which is a shows. And this one, we, uh, uh, we have it until 1965, uh, when uh, late his Highness uh, Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the ruler of Bahrain at that time, they brought uh, also architect from Italy. And that's why you see the different mosaic. During that time, this mosaic fall down. And I was proud that my father, architect, bah the first architect in Bahrain, they let him to restore this mosaic. And that's why you see it by end of uh, 50s, they have to remove it because they could not find the music. And then they kept the music only on the bottom of the minarets. And uh, in 1965, uh, uh, the late architect, of course, from the Italy, same time he's the designer and the builder. Uh, so they make it as it is. And I'm very happy that you put it all. Then later on also, late His Highness Sheikh uh, Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa uh, decide to, uh, to rebuild again, which is built or the design by uh, uh, architect Mr. Ibrahim Al Mu'ayyad. And then they put again different uh, mosaic. And uh, uh, these things is very important. And believe it or not, there is one man still exists who used to go up to the minarets and to change the light. Uh, according what he said, until 1985, he used to go there. And I said, you don't get scared. He said, when I go up, I don't look down. <laughs> and I managed during 60s to go to the half of the minarets. And it is really very high. Maybe now the new young generation, they say this is not high. No, it is high during that time. And this minaret, as you mentioned, uh, it is like, uh, uh, the, like the light for the ship at night to come to Bahrain at night or during the day. And you cannot imagine how I am proud and I'm happy about what did you do. Thank you very much. And we give uh, also thanks to Sheikh May, Sheikh Hala, and Sheikh Maryam, and uh, Bahrain Kuwait Bank. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. It was very, very interesting what you said. Very interesting because this confirmed how a, a, apparently a technical operation like the restoration of a, of a building has no meaning if there is not an historical background of life behind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Informations. Yes. In fact, it's very it's very vivid the history here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, to your team uh, for such a wonderful job in. Um, 
putting together this piece of history, this piece of art, um, a true icon of Manama, I believe, has been um, uh, born out of this minaret. I, I count myself very lucky to see it every day on my way to work, and I think after today's presentation and after uh, seeing it uh, two days ago at the opening, I think we're all going to have um, uh, appreciation for, for the beauty that is Al Fadl uh, uh, Minara. Uh, uh, great thanks to you and your team, to, to the sponsors, to Her Excellency, uh, to Her Highness Sheikh Maryam, and to Her Excellency Sheikh Hamay. Um, I have uh, a question uh, after you guided us through the, the process today. It's such a wonderful process. Um, you, uh, I relied a lot, of course, on the images, that, the beautiful images that you, you displayed to us today uh, from National Geographic, from Life magazine, and all the other sources um, in, in reproducing the minaret. Um, uh, my question is, um, were there certain parts of, of the minarets where perhaps the sources that uh, you relied on were perhaps um, not clear enough, or there were certain parts where, where there were still question marks as to uh, what the original design um, was like. And if that was the case, how, how did you approach that? Did you, uh, how did you have a certain interpretation of, um, of, of how to reconstruct uh, those bits of the minaret? Thank you. Thank you, good question. Uh, well, this project started uh, with the difficulties in finding information, but then something happened and, and photograph and photograph started to come up, uh, giving us not only the possibility to uh, build the idea of how the decoration was, but also the historical process that the minaret suffered. So, <coughs> for instance, we could see that at a certain point the balustrade uh, was uh, in wood, uh, then was turned into gypsum, then was turned into steel, then into aluminium. And uh, this gave us a pretty clear picture of what happened. And uh, as by our original uh, uh, project, we tried uh, to start and to go back to the beginning. And uh, so uh, that's why for instance, we decided to, uh, re to restore the balustrade in uh, teak wood, that is the most nobile and precious material that, that we could use. Even if at a certain point we saw the balustrade in gypsum and then in steel. Uh, we, consider every we consider that by the moment that we made this information available on the book, then our task is to go to the original, uh, to the original shape. And this is what, what we did. Uh, there is one thing that I forget that I would like to, to remind, to, to tell you, is that our team was, uh, was made of people from Italy, from Jordan, from Tunisia, from Bahrain. This was a, a kind of... Uh, international professional melting group that it's what gave I, I think the greatest richness in uh, what we have produced anyone giving a bit of their culture and their expertise so this in fact is not an Italian project is a is a multinational is a multinational project that I think is uh, how it should be because uh, culture as a no nationalities culture is uh, for everybody so thank you very much Th thank you again then uh, you will have we will have at the entrance of the center the book that we spoke about thank you andrena and roberto for offering us this beautiful story and it seems that we have tiles for decoration or we can take them yes <laughs> Yes, those, those are some of the old, uh, of the 1994 tiles that we removed and some uh, of the spare tiles that we brought in case we need. And in fact, we didn't need because everything went well into the position. So we saw that, that s m the majority is uh, at back uh, for the future maintenance of the uh, Menara, but some are available as a souvenir 
more souvenirs as well with the book <laughs> outside. Thank you again. Right.